masking tape. Comes in all shapes, sizes, colours and is terribly useful for keeping our paper flat and giving us a nice crisp white edge. But how annoying is it when you've finished your masterpiece, you take off the masking tape and it rips the surface. So annoying. So I'm going to bring you five or six tips about how to avoid that. And I'll also show you how you can use it is that the right way up? Yes, it is. <laughs> to do a little painting like this if you stick around to the end. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a professional artist based in Berkshire and I try and bring you tips and tricks each week that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's all about masking tape. <laughs> Masking tape, jolly useful stuff. It keeps your painting stuck to your board, it keeps your paper a little bit flatter and of course it gives you a nice clean edge around your painting to focus your eye in and you can use it for actually masking in your painting so if you stick around I'll show you this at the end. It comes in all different widths and in different colours. This is just really standard masking tape from you know, DIY shop. You don't have to get anything posh. This is called frog tape and it's a painter's tape. So it's quite low tack and is meant to peel off easily. I happen to have lots of this thick tape simply because it was on special offer and it was cheaper than the thin tape. But the big issue is, as you take it off your paper, it's going to rip it. So you've painted your masterpiece and you're desperate to see what it looks like finished and you want to take your um, tape off, but I would urge you to stop. First of all, do mop up any excess that you've got on the tape because if you're not careful, the moisture from that excess, which will dry more slowly than your paper, will go back into your painting and cause little cauliflowers round, round the edge, which would be annoying. Secondly, your painting should be totally dry to avoid it ripping when you take your tape off. So not just with the sheen having gone, and I can see a sheen on this, so I know it's wet, but even over here where the sheen has gone, I know it's still damp. So let's give that a proper dry. And now you think, oh, it's fine, it's dry. Oh yeah, yeah, I want to see what this looks like. Oh, <laughs> and it didn't do it, and you rip it off, and often it rips your paper. Actually, well, somewhat typically, that came off really quickly. So I would say take your paper off slowly and don't pull it vertically like that. Actually pull it away from the edge and do it slowly. And should you feel it starting to rip, come from the other end and work to where you can feel it sticking and that will stop it ripping in a long, long line. Do it slowly and do it at an angle. My next tip, if you are finding it sticking, is to actually heat your tape up with your hairdryer and that will slightly warm the adhesive and mean that it, it releases a bit more easily. Now you don't need to cook it, but we should find that that releases a little bit more easily than the cold tape. If it starts to, to stick, just warm it up again and you'll find that paper, that masking tape comes off your paper nice and easily. Fab. We'll just do the same down here and we end up with our painting with hopefully a nice clean border. Now you can see that it has seeped, the paint has seeped under in places. You can either clean that up with a bit of magic eraser perhaps. I'd suggest watching, I've got a little video all about how useful it is. That's magic eraser. 
you dampen it and it's really good for lifting paint or you could use a little white gouache and just cover it up or not worry because actually if it's a painting you're proud of you're probably going to frame it and a mount will will hide that so don't worry my final tip is if you've got some sticky tape sticky masking tape that is very prone to ripping your paper you know don't throw it away but before you actually put it on in the first place simply take off some of the stick by putting it onto your clothing or onto the surface then put it on and it will not be as tacky as it was before and should be a lot easier to remove at the end. So masking tape keeps your paper in place, gives you a nice clean edge and can be really nice for actually masking out whites. Thought it might be fun to show you masking tape in action. So let's stick our little bit of paper down just to give us that nice white border. And I thought if I showed you a few birch trees, they can be um, a really fun way of using masking tape as masking. So I've got this really thick tape and it's a bit super sticky, but I think will be rather good. And I'm ripping it so we don't have a straight edge because if you use this to mask with that really straight edge, it looks awful. So I've got a ripped edge like that, which I'll put down for where I want my trees. And obviously I've got a straight edge there, but if I put another ripped bit that side, my straight edges are together internally and therefore it just gives a nice profile. So there's quite a thick one, which we'll put about there. And then that's a torn edge. So I'll put it there. There's still a bit of a straight edge down there. So I might put it like that and just do the same for a few more sort of birch trunks. Right, I want to make sure that's stuck down properly. What you will find with the torn edges is that some paint will get underneath, but actually that's no bad thing. It gives a far more natural edge to it than a, a really hard sort of masked edge if you'd use masking fluid. So I've mixed up a few sort of autumnal colours in my palette. I've got some yellow, gold, a bit of goodness knows, orangey, pinky, greeny, and some black for markings on the um, trunks. And I'm just going to have a little bit of fun splashing colours around. Doesn't have to be in any particular order because just going to see a little bit of foliage. Oh, that pink's pretty. And it's just our, our imagination and let it all mix on the paper. While it's still a little bit, well, quite a lot of bit <laughs> wet, I'm just going to drop in a few more bits of concentrated colour to give the feeling of a bit of foliage. And if you wanted to, when it's a little bit more dry, you could even sprinkle in some salt and that might give some lovely little starbursts to look like foliage. So all our patterns are just about dry and it's time to take off the masking tape very gently, very carefully to see what's happened. And I'm just pulling it off slowly, just as I showed you before, at a slight angle rather than ripping it off. 
and there we have one tree trunk and as predicted it has seeped under the edges but I think that's rather nice I think that gives a little bit of extra um, sort of pattern to it I might like it less here and if you feel it tugging and I can feel it tugging there best thing to do is start from the other end before anything starts to tear and just do things gently and that is going to come off fine now that all looks good just going to pull that off gently and we've got our, our sort of main tree trunk has turned up there and we'll do that the same with the other bits and can you see how we've got nice slightly broken edges rather than really sort of sharp and straight which you know just wouldn't look right right so we've got our foliage we've got our our trees and now we just need to put in some branches and markings and what's great fun to do is to use a little cut off piece of watercolour paper put it in the end and print with it to, to make those lovely markings that you get on on birch trees if you go from both sides we get some and, and maybe a few sort of crosswoods as well so they're not all the same size or maybe a few sort of like this we start to bring our little trunks to to life I need to fatten this one up down the bottom but I can do that by just putting the markings to, to say fatten it up so we've got our trunks lovely silver birch trunks across our autumn foliage and then maybe we'd want some little twiggy bits so if you paint the edge and print them just makes a more interesting mark than if you used a paintbrush so you can either depending how big your paint well is just put it in and and get paint on the the edge or as I say you can just use your paintbrush like that and and put it on and alter the angle maybe have some sort of going across some a bit more fine you know what whatever you fancy And just vary things so that it looks as natural as as possible there you go just a super quick little painting showing you how you can use masking tape to actually mask but now of course we need to take off the the side masking tape and hopefully we've got a nice clean edge just to focus the eye in it's not the cleanest edge in the world but it's cleaner than if I hadn't done it so there is our little painting and a bit of understanding about how to use masking tape and avoid it ripping your paper.